Assalamu alaikum. Hi guys. Uh, today I'm going to finish the uh, virtual work method and we are going to talk about uh, how to calculate the virtual work method for uh, trusses. Um, if you remember at the beginning of the virtual work, I just gave you a table, a general table. It was at the end of the part one, part one of this. And uh, from that, uh, we showed you that the deflection for axial members is summation is simply the summation of i from one to the the number of uh, axial members uh, this being the virtual force this being the real force this is the length and this is divided by uh, e over a i usually e does not change if it does then it's just going to be i but that's not really uh, i mean that seldomly happens uh, okay so with that, uh, let's start with an example. Uh, I want you to, for the truss shown uh, on the next slide, we want the vertical displacement uh, at joint E due to the following loadings. Uh, the given loads at joints uh, C and D, so that's number one. Number two, if I have a uniform temperature rise of 30 degrees centigrade in members A, C, C, D, and D, B, and if I have a fabrication error such that member C, D is longer, then it's our actual length by uh, 0.02 meters. I'm giving you EA, which is constant for all, 2.4 times 10 to the 5 kilonewton. I'm giving you thermal coefficient uh, alpha of 10 to the minus 5 uh, per uh, degrees um, centigrade. So here is my uh, uh, truss. Uh, as you can see, these are the member uh, AC, CD, and DB, uh, which have that temperature rise. Uh, I want the vertical deflection at uh, joint E. I have the loads 40 kilonewton and 20 kilonewtons. Now, with any, uh, uh, like we started with both the frames and, and beams, if I want the deflection, whether it's vertical or horizontal, at uh, a certain location, I will just apply the virtual force of one kilonewton in that direction. Uh, again, if the choice of my deflection is correct, then I will get positive values. If not, I'm going to get uh, negative. So now this is my real system, and this is my virtual system. Now I have to find for each member individually uh, the axial forces. And I'm going to start with uh, the real system. If we take the summation of moment about point A is always zero, then we will find that by is equal to 25. Summation of fy equal to zero will give me ay to 35. And here I'm just giving you one example, a joint A, and the rest, again, we, we spent some time on that when we took the trusses. So I'm not gonna uh, spend too much time on that, but this is just giving an example. So here I'm using the method of uh, joints. Uh, here's my reaction, the 35 kilonewton, my unknown fae and fac. Uh, so the, the obvious choice would be starting with summation of Fy is equal to zero. And then that if this is my angle uh, theta. And theta is uh, simply tan inverse of uh, three and a half divided by four and a half. It's, no, that's not uh, four and a half. Excuse me. That's going to be uh, 2.5. So scratch that. Okay, and you get this, uh, the angle of uh, 57.26, and here's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is three and a half, two and a quarter, and this will give you the angle of 57.26. But 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 the results are, are true. So change that from four and a half to 2.5, to 2.25. I'm sorry. Okay. So summation of Fy is equal to zero, then 35 plus FAC sine theta will be equal to zero, which will give me FAC to be minus 41.6 kilonewton. Then doing summation of Fx, you saw is zero, then this minus 41.6, here I'm taking the uh, obviously negative means uh, compression. Then minus 41.6 cosine theta plus Fa is equal to zero, and I'll get Fa to be 22.5 kilonewton in uh, tension. Now for the virtual system, I'm going to do the same. Since it is symmetric, then this is going to be one half, and this is also going to be one half kilonewton. Uh, again, with the same uh, uh, joint, take this to be uh, equal to um, theta, and you will get FAC to be uh, minus 0.5 kilonewton. Again, this is compression, and this is uh, tension. 
uh, then uh, you will set up this table uh, right here and I went and I found the forces in each member uh, and here you can find AE has a length of four and a half, EB four and a half, CD four and a half and this is just simply the using uh, the Pythagorean theorem and I got uh, 4.2 and 4.2 now as you've noticed here I uh, used uh, I left the signs in there so negative I left it as negative so I didn't mess with it so uh, for member AE I had 22 and a half kilonewton and then in the virtual system one point was 0.32 then multiplying n times n times l over ae you will get 32.54 which what i'm doing is i'm multiplying the four and a half times 22 and a half times 0.32 and you get this right there so as you've noticed uh the negative i kept it this is positive so this value is negative so i keep it okay then i do a summation and I add all these up, okay? And it's giving me 287.99. Then my deflection is going to be this, like I said, and L over AE. So it's going to be 287.99 divided by uh, EA times 1,000 to transfer that into millimeters. So I'm getting a positive value of 1.2 millimeters, which means the direction that I chose for my virtual system was uh, correct. Now going to the second part. Uh, due to the temperature now I, I put in the same uh, table but I know I only have EB no excuse me I only have CD and uh, AC and DB with uh, temperature rise so I need to multiply so by the way this is going to be uh, uh, zero because there is no temperature rise there uh, again I'm using the same virtual truss because I want the vertical deflection and uh, E so technically you would need those or those because all you need is the one with uh, no let me take this back you do need that because it's part of it and uh, you don't need that so the only one that you need So the ones that I'm really interested in are uh, CD, AC, and uh, DB. Uh, the rest, I should not have put them on there. But, uh, well, the only reason why I did that is because if, if any, one of, any of these members do have a temperature rise, then it will be included. So remember, the one thing that you're doing is still... Uh, using uh, the uh, values for your virtual system or for virtual truss all of them and then you're you're multiplying that by the length with the one with the uh, temperature change which again in our case was c d a c and d b so if i had let's say uh, c e involved or e d involved then they will be added uh, as well and it but since they don't have any temperature rise that's the reason why i put the the rest of them to be uh, zeros okay so I multiplied that by their length uh, added them up and I got the value of minus 7.84 so the deflection due to temperature now again is that summation uh, which is ni times the change times li times alpha and since the change is constant for all then it's going to be it's 30 uh, the coefficient constant for all 10 to minus 5 so the only thing that is the summation is the 7.84 which is coming from that guy right there so then the total displacement is minus 2.35 uh, millimeters the negative value indicates that due to the temperature actually point e is going to rise up and not deflect down okay again you choose whatever direction you want and it will work itself out at the end now the last part which is the fabrication error well, in the fabrication error, the only uh, one that I'm concerned about uh, was member uh, uh, ED, I believe, and that virtual value for it was minus 0 0.64. Uh, and then we had an increase of uh, 0.02 uh, meters, so that's why it's going to be positive. If that was a decrease, if that was a decrease, then the value will be negative, and that's obviously meters okay so get rid of that and then it will give me a total of 12.8 millimeter upwards again 
Now, if I wanted the total deflection at point E or the total vertical deflection, then I will add the one from the loads, which was, I believe, 1.36. And then uh, this was down and down. Uh, and then you get from it the 12.8 and uh, 2.35, I believe. So that will be the total deflection. Okay, that will be total deflection. And the deflection would be obviously upward. Okay, but since I wanted them individually, so that's why I did each and one of them by, uh, uh, by itself. Okay, so again, just, just to uh, summarize uh, for trusses, it is straightforward. Just apply a virtual load at any point you want the deflection uh, at. You find the virtual forces and then you multiply them with the real forces and uh, you have everything. Uh, so if you want to, I guess, more examples, uh, maybe try and find the uh, vertical deflection at D. So then you would add one kilonewton here. Uh, if you wanted the horizontal deflection at E, then you will add one kilonewton uh, here. Okay, again, it go, can go that way or it can go that way. It depends. But the one thing that will stay constant for this particular truss is the lows that are coming from the 40 kilonewton and the 20 kilonewton. And the only thing that's going to change with you is the virtual system. Okay. So as an exercise uh, for yourself, under the same loading and condition, I mean, fabrication error temperature, uh, for instance, find the uh, uh, vertical deflection, let's call that uh, delta D vertical, and find uh, delta E uh, horizontal, okay? Um, I guess that's, uh, that's about it. If you have a question, please feel free to, to ask me. Uh, you guys have a nice day and stay safe.